Hi guys, the Asa Fika Los Dinfetes to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making delicious little hazelnut cookies that are going to be sandwiched together with chocolate. They're Italian cookies known as Baci di Dama, which basically means ladies kisses and they're perfect for a holiday table or for giving as holiday gifts or just for treating your family with something special with a nice cup of coffee. They are very simple to make and if you can't find hazelnuts, sometimes it's hard to find and sometimes they can get super expensive. Just substitute almonds for this and it will be just as delicious, especially if you like curambiadas. So we're going to begin using the tabletop mixer. So I have two sticks of soft unsalted butter. You want to make sure that it's soft and at room temperature. If, if you forgot to take it out of the fridge and it's hard, do not try to mix it. Pop it in the microwave for like 10 seconds just until it's really nice and soft. Don't melt it though either. And then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt and a cup of confectioner sugar, also known as powdered sugar, and vanilla extract, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. If you're using um, almonds instead of the hazelnuts, then go ahead, go ahead and also add a half a teaspoon of almond extract to it as well. It's going to really bring out the almond flavor. But since we're going with the hazelnut flavor, I'm going to leave the almond extract out. I'm going to beat this first starting on low speed so you don't end up wearing the powdered sugar. And then I'm going to increase the heat, uh, the heat, <laughs> the speed to a medium high and beat it until it's nice and fluffy. I'm going to go in between with a spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl. So the butter and sugar mixture is ready. Now you need one egg that's at room temperature. A nice little trick if you forgot to take out your egg and it's too cold, don't want to put it in the butter because it's going to make the butter harden and become clumpy. Put it in a bowl of warm water and uh, change that water out a few times until the egg is sort of warm and at room temperature. Don't put it in boiling hot water either, right? We're not boiling the egg. Now we're going to mix the egg in here. Always scrape down the side of the bowl. And now we're going to add two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I'll do one cup at a time. Now before that's done, now we're going to need a cup of toasted hazelnuts that have been ground. So take whole hazelnuts, put them in a baking pan, and then bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about seven minutes or until they start to smell really nice and fragrant. Then you're going to want to take them and transfer them to a clean kitchen towel and just rub them around. That's going to help most of their skin come off. All of it is not going to come off. They're still going to be, as you see, a little bit of skin or a lot of skin <laughs> left on them. Sometimes if, you're, if it's really hot and you put it in the towel and you do it very rigorously, they'll come out, but don't worry about it too much if you have some skin left over. Then go ahead and put them in a food processor and pulse them until you get this consistency right here. And we're going to need a cup of this. This is ground hazelnuts, a cup of toasted ground hazelnuts loaded with flavor. Like I said, if you can't find the hazelnut or if they're too expensive, use almonds instead. We're going to add the hazelnuts in here now and that's the final ingredient. We're going to mix this all together until a dough is formed. And that's it. The dough, the cookie dough is ready. We're going to take it out and transfer it onto our work surface. This batter, this cookie dough right here can be made weeks ahead of time and stored in the freezer and then let it come to room temperature and then you could go ahead and shape the cookies that way too. It's up to you. I'm just going to lightly flour my counter. My, this is not a counter. <laughs> this is a cutting board. Anyone else forget their words? And just flatten it out into a rectangle. You don't have to take out a, a rolling pin for this. You could just use your hands or even this dough scraper. So there are two ways to make these. Traditionally, these are made really small. So we're going to cut them into strips and make little small balls out of them. But if you wanted to just scoop them out with this little mini ice cream scoop, then you're going to get bigger ones like this. Now these are good for one person, but personally, I like them smaller. It's up to you. The ice cream scoop is going to give you fewer cookies, but they're going to be bigger, right? And then if you're going to do it this way, the way I'm going to do it right now, you're going to get more cookies and they're going to be bite sized. So I'm just going to cut this into strips. And then I'm just going to take a little piece about this big and I'm just going to roll it in my hand, in the palm of my hand, into a little ball. And I'm going to keep doing this until all of the balls are formed. Try to keep them uniform in size. That way when you go to stick them together later on, 
they'll just match perfectly. So if you're making little bite-sized cookies, you're going to have two trays full of little hazelnut cookie balls. At this point, what you're going to want to do is put them in the freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes so that way they can set. Preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Then go ahead and bake them in the oven and alternate the trays halfway through cooking so that way they bake evenly. If you don't need them all, then just bake some now and transfer the rest once they're frozen solid into freezer safe bags and bake them whenever you need them. And once they come out, we're going to let them cool completely. Then we're going to fill them with chocolate. So the cookies took almost 20 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I did flip the trays uh, halfway through cooking so that way they bake evenly because my oven does not have a convection, uh, con convention fan, doesn't have a fan inside and they, the bottom ones will burn. So I wanted them to cook evenly. You could do one tray at a time, whatever you want. They're going to be mostly pale. They almost look like shortbread cookies. The bottom gets slightly brown, just like this. And the top is pretty pale with, and they're a little bit golden all around. That's how you know they're ready. Now it's time to fill them. So I had some chocolate chips, semi-sweet chocolate chips in my pantry. And I did have a bar of baking chocolate. I just combined them in a bowl and I popped them in the microwave at 10 second increments. Mix them until the chocolate was nice and melted and now it's time to fill. So I have chocolate hazelnut spread over here and the semi-sweet chocolate that's been melted. I'm going to do half and half so because chocolate hazelnut spread with hazelnut cookies goes amazing. That doesn't even need to be said. Basically what you're going to do, if you want to be super neat, you could put the chocolate in a little pastry bag and just pipe it on. But it's very easy to do actually. It doesn't, shouldn't cause too much of a mess. Just put a little dollop. On one side, take another cookie, press it together. Just look at how beautiful that looks. Set it on the tray. Try to set them standing up so that way they can set properly and keep filling them with the chocolate. We'll do a bunch with the semi-sweet chocolate and then we'll do the Nutella. So just so you know, the Nutella is much softer and it's going to take a little longer to melt, uh, not melt, to set. If you want it to quick set, the tray that you have filled with Nutella, pop them in the freezer for like 10 minutes and they'll set really quick like that if you're in a hurry. But when you're making cookies, you shouldn't be in a hurry, right? Now let's do some with the chocolate hazelnut spread and it's basically the same exact way. You just put some of the chocolate on one side, sandwich the cookies together and you set them aside so that way they can set. Keep a towel on hand so that way you can keep wiping the chocolate off your fingers so you don't get the cookies dirty. If they have some chocolate drip, that looks pretty, but if they have little fingerprints, that's going to look sloppy and you don't want that. You went through all this trouble to make them. So I'm going to continue filling these with chocolate, then I'm going to set them aside and let them set completely. You, the chocolate needs about an hour or so to harden and hold the cookies together. Then I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and have a little snack and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. So I will say that the ones with the semi-sweet chocolate filling do set much faster and much better with, than the Nutella filled ones because Nutella is already sort of soft and it doesn't really harden. I mean it does once you leave it out with the air, it will dehydrate some and it will hold. But the semi-sweet chocolate also tastes really good with it. But if you want to leave the chocolate out for some strange reason, maybe you're not a chocolate fan, apricot jam or even fig jam would go really nice in between these. It goes pairs really well with hazelnut. I made myself some Greek coffee, poured a cup, and now it's time to take a bite. Mmm. So good. The chocolate is almost a little bit chewy in between. The cookies are crumbly and delicious. They do resemble curambiedas, except not as crumbly as a curambie. Curambiedas are basically Greek almond cookies. You can taste the hazelnut, pair so well with the chocolate. I'm gonna enjoy this cup of coffee. You guys head on over to the website, dimitrosdishes.com, print the recipe out, or get the ingredient list underneath this video in the description box down below. If you don't want to make little sandwich cookies like these, you can totally roll the dough out and just cut it out using your favorite cookie cutter. Get creative. The, the holiday season is here and you can just cut them out into little reindeer or acorns or whatever your heart desires, little circles or hearts. Then you can either um, drizzle some chocolate on top or serve them plain with some powdered sugar. 
so many options, but definitely make these cookies. You're gonna definitely, you're gonna absolutely love them. Hand them out as gifts and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you wanna make the Greek almond cookies, then you're gonna wanna click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.